with me, KHTS. Hey, welcome to the show, the Total Financial Hour, on your place for news, talk, information. Your hometown station, KHTS. This is, uh, listen, a, a great place for you to learn about your financial life. I mean, that's what we're all about. It's what we try to be about anyway. And hopefully to learn, uh, you know, why things happen financially in your life. Because look, the system is not set up for you to win. It's not set up for you to lose. It's just set up. <laughs> right? I don't think it's this vast left wing or la- vast right wing conspiracy or this vast, you know, big business. Uh, listen, business's job is to make a living, right? Just like your job is to provide for you and your family. A business is the same thing. So don't ever confuse or put values necessarily right and wrong on uh, the existence of any type of business. Certainly there are some out there, and you might argue, uh, you know, s- certain industries, of course. But overall, when we're talking financial, your life is not about uh, one necessarily uh, good company or a bad company. It's concepts, it's ideas, it's the processes. Let me give something uh, to you as an example. Uh, we had a client come in recently, uh, and they worked their whole life for the city. I won't tell you which city. It's not Santa Clarita. They worked for their whole life for the city, and they've done very well. A great pension. Uh, their pension is uh, about $4,000 a month. It's not bad when you're 60 years old. Uh, she worked for a very long time, so, so quite a while, I think over 30 years. Uh, so she's 60 years old. She has a, a pension of about 4000 a month. But when she worked, she always had income every month, dollar came in because it was a a guaranteed thing, right? When you work for a city or a county or a state, you have the same kind of income that comes in just about every month, unless you work overtime. She had this guaranteed source of income coming in. Oh, you get a bonus or a pay raise or an allowance for this, or we signed a contract so everybody gets an extra thousand dollars, right? They would do things like that over the last 30 or 40 years. So she receives a few extra dollars. Hey, you saved some money. Hey, you bought a rental property. Hey, you inherited some money. So every once in a while, a few extra dollars would come into her hands, her and her husband. But the point is, between Social Security, because her husband's on Social Security, their pension, they receive about $7,000 a month. Now, that's actually a little more than that, about $8,000 a month. Now, that's enough for them to live on. That's more than she made when she was working. Net, right? Take Mm -hmm. home. So she did very well. The difference is this. She had $350,000 in her retirement account. Because when you work at a job or a company, a lot of them have these retirement accounts called 401ks. Now, that's a for-profit company. But if you work for a city, county, or state... You have a 457. That's right. Also known as what? Deferred compensation. If you work for the county of Los Angeles, you might say, I don't have a 457. I don't even have a deferred comp. I have... Horizons. Horizons. Same thing. Okay? They just brand it differently so somebody could call it something. I'm working on a Halaby right now to see... You should work on that. Because yeah. I'm heir of Hallaby, so, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. The heir of IRA. Uh, well, you can put in as much as you want, never pay any taxes on it, take it out, never pay any taxes. Take that to the floor. I That's like right. It. The heir of IRA. I like it. So so why that matters, right, why, why her 457 or deferred compensation plan matters is because when she retired, she had 350000 Now, what type of account is this? It's a pre-tax account. Pre-tax. It is a retirement account. Yep. Here's where you guys make the mistake. And I don't mean a little mistake. You think that that big chunk of money is a savings account, meaning yep. I'm just going to take out chunks of money whenever I want. Uh, I need a new air conditioner. I need a new car. I need new windows in the house. And you think that your retirement account is a savings account. It is not. Unless you don't care about that money or it's small enough to where who cares? I don't care if I get less than half by the time taxes and all that. Great. No problem. Figure. God. Boom. But realize you've got to understand this. It is not a savings account. It is a very simply uh, put an income generating machine. Great example. Ready for this? I figured you, you guys would be ready for this one. Now you have a chicken. And every day that chicken gives you an egg. (laughs) Now listen, an egg is not filet mignon. An egg is not, you know, a freshly caught salmon in the sea. But it's an egg. It has protein. It has some vitamins. It's an egg. But you're going to get that egg every single day, aren't you? Or you can choose to kill the chicken and have an amazing chicken. An amazing chicken dinner. A little bit of herbs, a little bit of chives. 
I might even put some sage in there, mix it up right underneath. A little bit of lemon, a little bit of olive oil. Maybe, I don't know, maybe salt and pepper is your thing. And it's an amazing dinner. And then it's over. And tomorrow you are hungry, and the next day you're hungrier. And a week later, you're starving. And in retirement world, that means you go back to work. That means you sell off assets like your home. That means you downsize your house and you make emotional decisions and reasons why you shouldn't have a big house and, you know, you don't understand. And about what? And all because you wanted to eat amazing chicken the first day. Your retirement account is the chicken. You can take out chunks of money, twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, and you're going to have to pull out about twice that because you're going to have to pay taxes on it. Or... You can decide that that money, that 300, in this case, the 350000 it can give you somewhere around $1,500 a month, whatever, plus or minus, forever, at least for as long as you're alive. It'll never run out of money. Now, $1,500 a month isn't enough to buy an air conditioner tomorrow, but if you save up for three months, four months, six months, done. $1,500 a month isn't enough to necessarily fly or travel around the world and take that cruise you always wanted. But after three or four months, it might be. In other words, you can have a dozen eggs, but it's going to take a while. So be very careful. Your retirement account is not a savings account. I know for many of you, you were never used to managing or handling big chunks of money before. It just wasn't, just wasn't your, in the cards for you, financially speaking. So keep in mind that you have to manage this account or have somebody manage it where they aren't paying, f you're, you're not paying fees, you're not going to be paying unnecessarily income, in t income tax on the money. And look, it, it, it's not at risk. Right. That's a big part of it, Jeff. We see it over and over. Well, and you hit it on the head. I mean, you've talked about this for a long time about having a budget for your retirement years. And you may think, oh, well, why do I need a budget? I'm not bringing money in. It's uh, different amounts of money and different outflow. Uh, I, I basically am on a fixed income. Well, even more so why you need a budget. You have to be able to say, okay, I need tires on the car. I need to buy a new refrigerator. I have to put a roof on the house. And if you take it from that nest egg, that retirement account. Remember, that's what replaced your income. Now, you went to work all those years and you threw a couple of fish back after you caught it and it goes into the bucket and then that is supposed to replace your job. And we see time and again that, oh, you know what? I, and there, if you're right, it's that big chunk of money. People think that it's a put and take account except all they're doing is taking and they're not putting anything back in. And by definition, you're retired. You're not putting money back into that retirement bucket. It's supposed to dish out money to you now. That's its job. Not to go and pay for other things like that. Yeah, because it's a different status. The $20 in your pocket is different than the $20 in your savings account. Right. The $100 in your, in your child's college fund is not the same as the $100 in your retirement account. Each account has a job to do. I think why wealthy people are wealthy is because they understand the different status, the different places that money sits. I think poor people are poor mentally, not not. Homeless, right? Poor. I don't mean that. I mean poor in, in a mindset where you think your life is just about the next paycheck and you're expecting the, the company or the city or the county to give you a, a paycheck. Well, when times are good, they do. And when times are tough, you get laid off. They, they, they used to call it fired, but now they call it laid off so you don't feel bad. Because yeah. they're going to call you back, maybe. Yeah, because we're worried about your personality you yeah. know, being uh, know, affected if they fire you. No, you were fired. It's okay. I've been fired. It's okay. It stinks, hurts, sad, but eventually you get over it, right? And you look for another job, right? If you've ever been dumped by a girl or a guy, right? Yeah. Then you eventually find somebody else because you have to understand that your future, your retirement is your responsibility, guys. I don't want you to use your retirement funds for college planning. You can emotionally put this. In fact, I had this just the other day, right? It was imp pretty important. When you come with a bad financial decision, we've seen this, Jeff. Sure. People come in and it's a bad financial decision. It just doesn't make sense. I don't, it, listen, I don't care. It's your money. But don't think that one plus one is three because you really believe that it is. You've heard me say that. One plus one is two. Whether you want it to be six or you feel like it's nine, one plus one is still two. You could be passionate. You could be on the left. You could hate Trump. You could hate Obama. You could hate Hillary. It doesn't matter. One plus one is still two, no matter where you fit. The reason poor people are poor is because they think the depth of their passion can change math and logic. It cannot, guys. I don't care. Nobody cares what, 
you know, the, the math doesn't care if you are really, really upset. It just is. So here's an important part. You take a bad financial decision and you cover it up in God, family, or the right thing to do. Here's a good example. Air, we need an air conditioning. Oh, why? Well, because, you know, I have the grandkids and well, when did your air conditioner break? Oh, it didn't break, but, you know, it's just, it's coming up. It's time. It's coming around. Okay, so we have a little time. Well, this summer is going to be a hot summer. Well, but does it still work? Yeah. Okay. But, you know, you don't understand my grandchildren. They're, they're the, listen, I would do anything for, I don't care about my retirement. I'll go back to work. These are my grandkids, right? You've covered a bad financial decision to take money from your retirement account. In my example here to pay for an air conditioner, which means you're going to have to pay twice as much for it because you have to pay taxes on that money instead of waiting over time to save up the money. And you're doing so where the only position that I can take mathematically and logically is that it may not be the right move. It's up to you, but it still may not be the right move. But you understand, for me to do this, I have to say family's bad. Forget your grandchildren. <laughs> well, of course, who's, what kind of heel would say that? Or they say, you know, here, here's another one. Single mom in her late 40s, husband passes away. Four children, all still living at home. She never even graduated high school. Husband dies. Her total assets between his life insurance and retirement accounts was $700,000. Okay, between Social Security for her and the minor children and the accounts, we could make a, a reasonable living. She may have to work part-time, but, but life would be okay. And then she comes and she says, I think God wants me to donate 70000 10%, 70000 to this church that I go to. And I said, but that's not, no, it, it's not a tithe. In other words, listen, I'm not a theologian by any stretch, but you can certainly ask anybody besides the guy who was going to receive it because he said it was a good idea, hmm. right? He and his brother run the church, so that's what you get. And, and instead of saying, no, we're not going to accept it, absolutely not, because widows and orphans are what we're supposed to take care of, he convinced her that, quote, God, with a little G in my opinion, said it was a good idea to take part of a widow and orphan money that are life savings from an uneducated, uh, not a bad person, please don't get me wrong, but she just didn't graduate high school, so, so her depth of uh, knowledge is not as deep. And instead says, we're going to take those funds and we're going to spend them. So what am I going to do when she comes into the office to say, hey, this is what I need the money for? Am I going to say, no, go against what God tells you to do? Really? <laughs> I'm just a financial guy. I'm not, uh, you know. Right. So, no, that would be. So, in other words, when you cover a bad decision, the conversation is over to anybody in your life with a calculator or with logic. So, step back for a minute when you make these bad decisions and see, am I going to kill the chicken and make a wonderful meal for tonight? Or am I trying to cover a poor financial decision by being the, we, people used to call it holier than thou. By being, you know, oh, I'm so amazing. Look how good I am. Look what I will give. If it's a bad financial decision, folks, it's a bad decision. So be very careful when you walk down those roads. You know, something else you brought up, Arif, is having somebody in your corner. You know, working with somebody that can help kind of guide you and mentor you through these situations, especially if there's an inheritance or a windfall of money. It is incredible. I mean, the statistics are out there, right? W when's the average inheritance? Uh, inheritance spent within about what eight months eight months yeah. there you go so regardless of how much by the way 20,000 or 200 or doesn't matter and and that's incredible to me because it just goes to show the depth of your character and you taught you taught me this a de over a decade ago Arif. your character w will be exacerbated by that money coming in if you're good with money you will be good with that amount of money if you're not good with money you'll be really bad with that amount of money and Basically, uh, we've seen it either cause someone's demise or uh, set somebody up for the rest of their life to where they never had to work again. So, I mean, it, it, here's, here's the whole thing in a nutshell. You have to have and form good financial habits as early as possible, as early as possible. And if somebody is maybe giving you a little you know, whisper in the ear or maybe a really loud shout, hey, this is a bad idea, and you don't like their opinion and you can't sell them on why your idea is better than theirs, right? go get another one and see how many people – are, are wrong and that you're right. Uh, often, 
a wise person that I've, uh, in my experience, even in the financial world, even financial professionals, we always ask multiple uh, opinions. We ask ideas from other people or question what we thought was right or wrong or up or down. I have changed my opinion on many things over my life. In fact, I said something recently, well, I guess it's been about a year now, where I said, you know, the older I get, the grayer things become. Now, yeah. it could mean lots of things, right? You think gray hair, of course. But it means that when you were younger, for me at least, so black and white in certain things, well, you know what? There's a few more exceptions in the middle there. There's a few more reasons why things may not always be 100% ru- uh, white or 100% black or 100% good or 100% bad. There may be times when things are just a little bit different. And the older I get, the g- now listen, some things have become even gray, uh, e- even blacker than before or even whiter than before. When it comes to decisions, my decisions have been reinforced. The way that I do things or said things are even more enforced. So all of those things can happen. You can either have your, your uh, opinions, your ideas, your, your way of doing things more solidified, financially speaking, a- and in life, or you can start questioning some of those. And I'm okay with both of those things. What I don't want you to do is to make a rash financial decision that we are seeing over and over again. Because especially from last year, people's accounts, some of them have gone up pretty good. And they think that they've made something, that they've made the money. Right? If I know how to build a business, I don't know, let's say I own a, a, a little mini mart. And I've worked hard. I understand how to build it and manage it and create it. And I'm a mini mart. And I can build that mini mart. And then it gets taken from me for whatever reason, a fire, flood, a divorce, a death. My partner you know, took advantage of me, whatever, and it's gone. Give me a year or two, and I've built another one, right? I'm right. back in business again. Why? Because I learned things. I had experience. Some things I'll never do again. Some things I better do you know, twice as much. But if you inherit money that you never earned, and the only thing that you were emotionally or financially capable of earning, not bad or good, but was five or six or eight or $9,000 a month because that's what the paycheck was. And then all of a sudden you receive 500000 or a million. I want to caution you because you can't go back and earn that again. Why do I say that? Because you didn't before. It wasn't that you were bad. It's just that your skills and emotional whatever wasn't capable of making 500000 You know, Now you're 58 years old or something. So when you inherit 500000 you or whatever the number is, you've got to treat that very carefully. Don't let the broker world try to feed the daylights out of that thing. When we come back, I'll give you an example of a, a client just earlier today. I told her I might talk about it on the air. So when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll review some more. And this is your hometown station, folks. I'm Eric Hallaby, along with Jeff Gerard, on your place for news talk and information. This is your hometown station, KHTS. We'll be right back. The Santa Clarita Artists Association has a new gallery in downtown Newhall on 6th Street between Main and Railroad, right across from the Canyon Theater Guild. The gallery features our members' paintings, sculptures, and one-of-a-kind handcrafted gift items. Whether you're an art lover, buyer, or an artist wishing to join, visit our website at santaclaritaartist.org, come to our free monthly meetings at Barnes & Noble, or stop by the gallery. For upcoming events and exhibits, check us out at santaclaritaartist.org. We make visual art visible. Marston's Restaurant has been a Pasadena landmark, voted the best breakfast in California by the Food Network magazine. Discover Marston's Santa Clarita location, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Marston's also has a fantastic catering menu that adds a delicious twist to any event. And they cater picnic dinners for that memorable romantic date. Experience Marston's on Newhall Ranch Road and McBean. Or log on to marstonsrestaurant.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Your hometown station. This is your place for news, talk, and information, your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Eric Hallaby. That's Jeff Gerard, and your place for news, talk, and information, your hometown station, KHTS. It's AM 1220 and FM 98.1. You can always join us. Uh, FM, uh, of course, has a little bit of a different signal. You can go a little uh, further. You can get into the buildings. It's kind of fun, and uh, AM 1220 uh, is our flagship all the way out to the uh, Ventura. I know to Edwards Air Force Base, we have folks that work there that listen to us pretty regularly. 
uh, as well as in parts of the San Fernando Valley and a little part of uh, the Simi Valley, depending on where you are. So thanks for joining us again, Arif Halaby, and that's Jeff Gerard. Okay, as we continue, uh, your family's financial life uh, is built on a lot of things. One of those is to not lose the money you've worked your life for. That's a big deal to me. I don't want you to go backwards, all right? Number two is make sure that you're earning reasonable rates of return. You don't have to beat uh, the market. You, you're never going to necessarily keep up with inflation every minute of every day. But staying above it most of the time is probably a pretty good thing, and especially if you have built up a nest egg. And so a lady earlier today, uh, $1.1 million, some of it inherited from her uh, ex-husband or former husband. He passed away. Uh, some of it from her new husband. She's been remarried for many years now. Uh, and some of it from herself, of course, working all the years. They sold some things. So anyway, $1.1 million, lots of money, all right? The fees on that account are about $1,400 a month. Now, think of that for just a second. Is there somebody buying and selling and flying to Singapore and looking at the newest company's remodel and to see if it's worth investing in it? And let's go to the headquarters in Des Moines, Iowa, and let's fly to uh, you know San Francisco to see the new inv- or are they golfing every Wednesday? And as in her case, the guy takes off most Fridays and sometimes Mondays. Wow. And, and she's like, I called to make a trade, and he's not around, and I got a call, and then I got to do here, and then here. So in order to make a trade, it, it's very difficult. I, so you have to ask yourself, what am I paying for? I don't know what it is. It may be something great. It may be you're getting amazing service and amazing insight and little tricks to the trade and you know jumping in front of a – a stock or a bond or a mutual fund or an ETF before it's too late. I don't know. But a hundred percent of the time, if I say this to you and you're one of these people, you would say, Oh my gosh, that lady is a fool. She doesn't even know how dare she, how could she pay that much money? And then we look at your portfolio and it's the same or worse <laughs> in most cases. Yeah. I don't know why people forget to double check these things. Well, the crazy part here is, you're bringing up the real live dollar number, the dollar figure, the outgo of her account every single month come heck or high water. With that amount of money, you might say, ah, oh, you know what? Uh, what, she have over a million dollars in her account? Yeah, one point uh, You know what? Uh, I got a break. They're only charging me uh, one and a half percent. Uh, the guy down the street, he's he's getting charged two, two and a half. So they cut me a deal because the amount of money I have. They think, well, one percent, that's one and a half. That's, that's probably not bad. Translate that into dollars. And see if you're comfortable with that amount of money coming out of your account every year, every quarter, or every month. Yeah, in this particular case, which was amazing, is the uh, they had something called Guided Solutions. It's one of the it might be their trademark. So, uh, one point the the web says this one point three five percent on their own website says one point three five percent is where the fees begin, not including whatever the product is. So, in other words, if you have a ETF that's a 0.8%. Now you add 0.8 plus 1.35. You could end up over 2% per year in fees. Now, if you do the math, that's $20,000. Yeah. Now you might say, oh, 20,000. No, no, let's, do, let's take 20,000 and divide backwards. Because we don't pay bills per year. We pay them per month. $1,600 a month. Sheesh. Add in there a variable annuity, and you know, who knows what the fees are. In her case, it was near, uh, over 3%. So now you have another 3%, either on top of that or in, or in, or in addition to that or, or in place of it. Another, it doesn't, 3%. That means if the market goes up 10, you only get 7. If the market goes down 10, you, pay, you lose 13. So you will always be earning less, and you will always be losing more. So be very careful when you have significant fees and you're not getting something for them. Well, Eric, if those fees stop as soon as I retire and start taking eh. the money out, oh, wait, what do you mean? Eh. Doesn't happen. <laughs> but I need $1,500 a month out of this account. Oh, this is a, this is a good one. A client, uh, was it yesterday or Friday? Uh, we worked Saturday too, so it's all kind of a blur. But <laughs> we were uh, met with the client recently. They're actually pulling uh, $1,000 a month from their account. To live on. Okay, okay. great. $1,000 a month. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's the job, right? The job is to give them income for the rest of their life. No problem. And then we looked at the fees, and inside of that were $450. So $450 for the broker who takes Wednesdays off to go golfing, sometimes leaves early on a Friday, certainly 1, one o'clock when the market's closed. This is her word. She said at 1 o'clock in five minutes, you can't find them. 
And sometimes Monday he's off for whatever reason. <clears throat> so that's great gig if you can get it, right? $1,500 a month and you never even have to see or talk to somebody except, you know, use fast talking or big words and, right? That's part of what they do. Uh, here's a, uh, listen, I know this. They're not going to like me. They, they, they say bad things about me. I get it. Sometimes you're, you're a coward and you can't say it to my face. I don't mind talking about it. You, maybe I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Maybe this is the gray area. But, but here's part of it, though, you guys. When we looked at an account the other day and we said, okay, why is this account where it is? What's the purpose of this money? And she said, the purpose of this money is to leave it to my children and my grandchildren. I said, okay, did the purpose change? Because sometimes it does, right? Maybe you go, oh, now I'm ready. I don't need it anymore. Or I didn't think I need it. Now I do each month, right? That can change. So was that always the purpose of this money? And she said, uh, yeah, yeah, it never changed. You, you told the last person? Yeah. Okay, so when we said, well, here's what it really does. And it's not me telling you. Folks, we call the main company, not the broker, but we go around the broker directly to the company and we fill out a worksheet and it's on a recorded line. Now, they, that's kind of funny, actually, they did it on this case. They immediately call the broker and say, hey, somebody's sniffing around and asking about fees. So as soon as they could get a hold of the broker, because it took them <laughs> a day to get a hold of them, <laughs> then the broker called her and said, hey, uh, hey, what's going on? I just want to make sure. So just kind of understand that part of this process is for them to convince you, now not always, and not everybody, but in this particular lady's case, she felt that the process was there to convince her that she's she should stay. Here's a good example. So usually, hey, I'm thinking about making a change. No, no, it's not bad. It's not bad. Our product's great. And then after uh, you say, no, no, I want to go to safer choices. I want like a fixed indexed annuity or a fixed annuity. I want to guarantee. No, 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 no. Their product is bad. So first, our product is great. And when you say, yeah, but the fees and the losses, they go, no, no, no. Their product is bad. And you say, well, maybe, but I did some research on my own. I called the companies directly. They, they, they are what Eric says that they are, the fees, the features, the, the, everything with it that he said it is, it is. Okay. Then the third step after, uh, uh, after that, you know where I'm going, Jeff. <laughs> the third step after <laughs> that is they say, don't, don't, you, don't you still have trust in me? Don't you still care about me? It starts to become about them. You know, I, I took you out to dinner. I brought you, uh, I took you to my family's home. Uh, my kids, one of them said that, that he would go out on his boat and he would take his kids and her grandkids. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was pretty exciting. And I said, yeah, because you bought the boat. He, you <laughs> <laughs> he better let you take it, go out on it. Did he at least <laughs> let you drive? She laughed and said, no. <laughs> I said, so yeah. they make it about them. Why are you hurting my feelings? Why is it, you, you should know, it's about me. And you sit there for a minute and you go, well, gosh, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought this was my money. And, then, she, and then, then it gets angry. And it's either angry directed at you or angry directed at us. But then it gets angry. And I don't know why they go there because it's never, you're never going to say, okay, okay. Since you called me a bad name, I'm going to work, stay working with you. Right, right. Right. I think it just makes them feel better that it's your fault. <laughs> And it's incredible, the process that it takes place. Sometimes it does it in the same conversation, but usually it takes one or two uh, you know, conversations throughout the process to get there. Well, and uh, we've even heard, you know, after all of this convincing otherwise, oh, well, fine, if you really want it, <clears throat> why don't you just let me do it for you? If it was that bad to begin with, they're just doing their best. Now they're grasping at straws trying to yeah. keep it to where that they can control that, that Yeah, that's right. And so. that's, usually the, that's usually just before the anger stage. Right. Right, because part of what you do is to realize that in your financial life, this is your money. Don't ever let a broker try to convince you. If it has two names, they generally number <laughs> one. If it has two names in their brokerage names, number yeah. one, realize this: they always fee your money somewhere. Number two, they always, always will keep some of your money at risk. Because that is the only way to fee it. If your money's at risk, you could lose. If it's not, you don't. So if you are somebody who's going to be working through retirement and you, you can afford to have your money go up and down, then fine. 
your food and shelter clothing comes from your from your income, right? Your That's social right. security, your job. Then play with some money. People go to Vegas all the time. They speculate. Yep. Find somebody who's an expert at speculation where they can lose it, they can make money, they can, you know, less fees. Great. But don't, don't also think that they can be an expert in safety. You know what else is interesting here, I think, is remembering that when you look at the financial world, look at the different names that are involved. Look at the different ways to talk about something. My example earlier, percentages versus dollars. You'll see a lot of times that percentages are used, and that's, I don't know if it's meant to confuse you or what, but always have them translate that into dollars. And if you're okay with that number being taken away from your account, hey, look, if it's a positive for you, great. But if it's coming out of your account, always make sure you know what that looks like in dollars because yeah. that's a very, very important distinction there. The other thing is, Arif brought up some, some interesting things too about fees. There are also costs, charges, and expenses. Your broker might say, oh, I only charge a, a $45 a year fee. Great. Would you work for $45 a year? Yeah, last I checked, I don't think so. Know that there are other things involved, especially with the, some of the big wirehouses out there. So the names are very important. The way that something is called can determine how much money is coming out of your account. So be very aware of that if you can. And what's the purpose of the funds? Always go back right. to that. Y you know, if you say, I'm willing to say that these funds don't have to be there in retirement, I, part of it is, you know, if, if 100000 becomes 200 then great. That's, that's, but if, if 100000 becomes fifty. Does that change and affect your retirement? If it does, then you have an issue. Right. You say, then I can't afford the risk because the downside is much more uh, harmful than the upside is beneficial. And that is where most people forget because they always think the market's going to go up. They did it when they flipped houses. They did it when they bought gold, when they speculated in Bitcoin. They always thought the market was going to go up. And when it does, you're the smartest person around. Ha, 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 look at you. You're right, you're right, you're pretty bright, you're smarter than me. And when it goes down, you're like, uh-oh, what did that broker do? I want to sue him. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> look when the market goes down. If we stay down into, in these down ranges for a little while, look, watch out for the lawsuits. Now, remember, you signed an arbitration agreement, so everybody and their mother sues their broker. But every once in a while, if you just put lawsuits and you put your two-named broker in there, and remember, everybody's a... A vice president. People say, you know, but I work with the vice president over, you know, Smith and Jones. Okay. Everybody's a vice president <laughs> or the assistant. So they're, you're either the assistant that answers the phone or the vice president. They go, oh, and I know, but no, it just means you're not new. It's, and that's okay. They can call whatever they want. You know, I'm going to go by Grand Poobah and see if I can do that. Does that sounds prestigious? Does that make me? Maybe you can charge a fee for that. Well, kind of. Only cool. if they get to talk to the grand poobah. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to work with one of the assistant poobahs. The assistant poobah. All right, so uh, we're going to take a quick break here. We're going to come back in a minute as we finish up the hour of the program. Uh, I want to give you some ideas when people are retired, what some of the differences that they're, that they're doing and how they can stay retired. Look, because I spent a little bit of time on the fees, only because this just happened with the client earlier today and, and in the last few days. How is it that your financial life is impacted not only when you go backwards, uh, in this lady's particular case, right, she came in today, and the account from April 2nd to today, she lost $4,000 wow. in her account. Hmm. And the broker's trying to defend it because she had 100 so 100 went to 98 now to 94 And so she's trying to, so she's asking the broker, what happened to my money? You said it was guaranteed. You said it was safe. Now, once you ask a question or two that sounds like you know what you're doing, she said the broker talked really fast and, and started never answering a question and started feeling. So if you feel like you're, uh, you know, like I'm a pretty bright person and I'm not understanding this. If you feel like that's happening, it is not you, just so you know. It is usually a defense mechanism by somebody who's either did something wrong or thinks they did something wrong or is worried that you think they did something wrong and they start playing this fast-talking game. So trust yourself. Trust your instincts and say, slow down, slow down. Let's take it one question at a time. This question, yes or no? This question, yes or no? And if you do that, if you take control, then you'll be able to walk through and see if the account's right for you. If it is, more power to you. I don't want you to be in an account that isn't right for you. I want you to be in an account that is right for you, but I just want you to know what it is. Right? For some people to say, listen, I'm willing to pay 
three thousand dollars a month in fees because I make ten. Well, good, go for it. I think that's a great move. I would do that every day of the week. So just ask yourself, am I getting the full story? All right, we come back. We're going to continue. I'm Arif Hallaby. That's Jeff Gerard. Your place for news, talk, and information. A total financial hour. That's us right here on KHTS, your hometown station. I'm Arif Hallaby, and we will be right back. Have you got a young one who's always on the go? Ice Station Valencia has an incredible program. Our Little Tykes Hockey Program for ages 3 to 6 makes it easy and affordable to introduce your child to the awesome sport of ice hockey. We provide most of the hockey gear for free to get started, including shoulder pads, elbow pads, gloves, and jersey. You'll be amazed at how quickly your child takes to the ice. Call 775-8686 or skate to the net, www.icestation.net. Remember when mom would bake cookies and you'd sneak some raw cookie dough? Raw cookie dough is the best, and now you can get safe-to-eat raw cookie dough at Delicious Sweets and Treats at the Westfield Town Center Mall. Delicious Sweets and Treats raw cookie dough comes in several flavors like birthday cake, sugar cookie, unicorn, and everyone's favorite chocolate chip. Not into the raw stuff? No worries. You can also get freshly baked cookies or buy the dough to bake yourself. Delicious Sweets and Treats near JCPenney's in the mall. I just want to send a shout out to all my customers. It's Dave Reeves from Reeves Complete Auto Center in Canyon Country. Reeves, Santa Clarita's choice for quality customer and automotive care. I've been in automotive service my whole life. I learned customer service and honest communication make the difference. Reeves, where customers matter. I really appreciate your business and hope to serve you in the future. Thank you very much. Reeves, on Ruther in Canyon Country. With Facey Medical Group, good health is within your reach. Our doctors provide Santa Clarita's finest primary and specialist care at four convenient Santa Clarita locations. If you're looking for connected, convenient, personal care, there's no better place. We accept most health insurance, including plans offered through Covered California. Call 1-844-MY-FACEY for more information or to schedule an appointment. Indulge yourself in the world of wine at the 6th Annual Sierra Polona Valley Wine Festival, Saturday, April 21st from noon till 4 p.m., benefiting the Zonta Club of SCV. Get your Chardonnay on with live music, gourmet food, handmade crafts, and the best local wine Santa Clarita has to offer at Reyes Winery. Dionysus Delatance and wine connoisseurs alike will enjoy this festival. Sponsored by Reyes Winery, Pepsi, Anheuser-Busch, main stage sponsor, SCV Advanced Audiology, and VIP sponsors, California Bank and Trust and Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. Visit ReyesWinery.com to purchase tickets. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Your hometown station. Thanks for listening to your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. Hey, welcome back to the show. That's Arif Halaby. I'm Jeff Gerard. This is the Total Financial Hour on your hometown station, KHTS. Okay, we're talking about your family's finances, guys, and uh, we're wrapping up this part of the hour. Uh, the biggest part here is remembering that your money has a job to do, right? We talked about retirement accounts being set for retirement. It's not a place where you're going to uh, dip into that amount of money, whether even if it's a, if it's a large sum of money, there is something called a safe withdrawal rate. You may have heard that from your financial advisor, from your team, just from the internet. There is a rate of, uh, of money that you can take out each and every month that's said by the experts that should uh, guarantee, or at least as close to it as possible, that you will have money for the rest of your life to draw on for retirement. Now remember, when you went to work, your time that you traded for money, that basically floated your expenses. You have to spend take a little bit of that money, throw it back, and not spend it so that in retirement you have a big enough chunk of money to live on. So that is where we think the hardest part is, right? But yeah, we right. think the even harder part now is once you get there, and you can ask anybody in retirement, they'll tell you, most people, that the easy part was accumulating the money. Making it last, that's the hard part now. Yeah, it was set on autopilot because they pulled it directly from your paycheck, and your HR or payroll department sent it directly to the company. And the company 
did whatever you told them to do, invested, you know, 20%, 20, 20, 20, 20, or 25, 25, whatever. Right. Uh, for no rhyme or reason, most of the time people just put it there because their coworkers said to put it there. They didn't really do any research. They don't understand. Uh, it's not that they're bad or, or good. It's just that they're an engineer or a physician or a school teacher. They just put it wherever it was supposed to go and went on back to work. And the time when you find out if you did a good thing or you made a good decision or not is not at the end of the year. It's usually 30 years later when you wake up right. at age 60. <laughs> so the the concept of having enough money to last for the rest of your life is should be around between the 4 and 5% range, meaning if you retire in your 50s, 52, 55, probably 5% is a pretty good number that I would think about. I, I wouldn't... Four four percent is probably right. Probably four. Yeah, yeah, I would say four. Taking out four. Yeah. Don't take out more than four. When you get into your sixties, maybe four and a half. You could go as high as five, but sixty-five years old, I'd be more comfortable. At f so why is that the case? Because when you do the math and you're pulling out money each month, and you just take the whole account and divide by a hundred, and you're pulling out that account value, you you're going to pull that account value out every month. So it now lasts for the rest of your life or, the, or every year. Now, knowing that there's going to be some interest that accrues, right? So you're going to go up a little bit. And some years, if you use accounts that we talk about, you never go backwards. You only go forwards or stay the same. But you may not go forwards as much, depending on what the market does. So you're trading off some things. And that trade-off doesn't pay the brokerage world, those two-name brokers. It doesn't pay them every quarter or every month. And that's what I think. The client asked this morning, so why didn't my broker do this account, type of account? I said, well, frankly, of course, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know who he is. But I do know that these don't have a mechanism. They don't have a, a, a process, a feature that pays the brokerage firm every month or every quarter or every year. Just like some of the other accounts, they do. If you have a variable annuity or, or a mutual fund or an ETF or a stock bond, those brokerage accounts... They take a fee from your account every single month or quarter or year, and that is how the the system gets paid. Well, that's great if your market if your account goes up, but if it goes down, you pay a fee even though you lost money. In other words, if the account go has a three percent fee and the market goes up ten percent, you get seven. If your account goes down ten, you lose thirteen. Because remember, you're paying fees. So you will always not make as much money and you will always lose more than you lost. So the idea is, if you're going to have your income expected to last, how long should you expect? W what are we thinking, Jeff? 20 years? 25 years? I'd say at least that. I mean, if you're retiring at 65, what do we always say? We say plan for 100, right? So if you take 100 and you minus your age when you retire... That's how many years you're going to have to fund your retirement. And then you have to kind of back that number into the amount of money that you have. And that can give you a pretty good baseline of the amount that you can withdraw. The challenge is, what we've seen is when the market goes up and these accounts start appreciating at higher levels than we anticipated. Let's say you, you built your plan off of 7 or 8 or even 10%. And you make 15 or 20%. You think, oh, I can, I can spend a little bit of extra money this year. But what about the years when the market is down or when your account is down? Are you still pulling that same amount out or are you going to live on less? You know, you can't have it both ways where you're pulling out more when it's doing well unless you're going to pull out less when it's doing worse. That's right. And then what you do, of course, is you have to change your lifestyle. And that is not what you want to do because for most people, if you're thinking of changing your lifestyle, then you can't afford long-term debt. Don't buy the RV. Don't buy the vacation home. Don't commit to a standard of living that requires you to lock in your expenses when your income is not locked in. If your income is locked in or guaranteed from a pension or Social Security, and et cetera, and why I always say count on about 75% of your pension. Now, you might say, Arif, but the union negotiated, but they told me, and I promised, and they promised. I get it, and there still isn't enough money. So uh, I don't care what – I can sign something and say, Jeff, here's $1 million. Come to my office and pick it up. <laughs> doesn't mean it's going to be there. Right. Right? I, I, you can write down and sign whatever you want, and uh, whether politicians or union leaders or negotiators or uh, bureaucrats, whether they knew that they were making uh, uh, statements or commitments that they couldn't afford to keep or not, I don't know that answer. I just know that your state of California, your state per CalPERS and state teacher's pension, 
uh, is below what it should be by billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. So what are they going to do? Well, I think they're going to give less benefits, whether they inflate the currency and then just don't give you a pay raise. So that might have to change some of the features of your contract. Whether they reduce what you actually get, whether they probably will tax the citizens, who most of them, by the way, do not have a government pension. Right? You get to retire at age 50, 55. That means you can live for 30, 35 years in retirement. So that government pension, which is a great thing if you can get it, penalizes the rest of the citizens. So you tell me if you don't think there's going to be a backlash. I think there is. I think when you have that 33-year-old uh, single mother of two who's a teacher in whatever district, and maybe she's making pretty good money, but you're not going to tell her, hey, your pension contribution has to be 15% or we're not going to make it. And you're saying, but that's crummy. I can barely afford to live. You know, my ex-husband, he's a jerk. He's not paying anything. Or my ex-wife is sick, and I'm, a, I'm a, the only one making money, and so I'm an educator, and, and well, how do I live? Right? All of those things. And you remember that the lady or the man who helped be your mentor, right? Remember when you were a student teacher eight years earlier, who's on Facebook or on any social media saying, oh, listen, I'm in Fiji right now. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Hey, celebrating my birthday. It's celebrating... Uh, you know, the uh, the New Year's at uh, in Australia, and you're thinking, wait a second. I am barely making ends meet. I have a sick wife, or my husband is an ex, uh, my ex is a lousy son of a gun who's not paying anything, and you're going to take more from my pension so that the, uh, the teacher who retired at 60 years old can travel the world. I'm not saying that's bad. I, I think, listen, it's the way it is right now. I'm telling you that I think that's going to lead to a backlash. So what will happen is they're going to have to raise taxes. And so some of you are going to retire in a different place. Right now, one out of two, one out of three of my clients retire outside of the state of California. It's what they do. Because the taxes, the fees, the craziness, the regulations, the cost of gasoline, the property tax, every time you turn around, they're taxing straws now. <laughs> we won't give you a straw because we want to... Okay, so I remember this from way back when. They used to call this symbolism over substance, right? Let's all pretend that we're doing something. And I thought, oh, no, because I used to be a lefty Democrat. No, 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 it's, that's, you know, that's so simplistic. And then this Prop 65 thing where it says they're cancer-causing agents, right? There's cancer everywhere, these agents, and we gotta, when you walk into a building, you've got to know. So then what they did is they put the sign everywhere. So now every place you go, whether it's a nursery or a grocery store, or a, a, a building, they just, because they don't want to be sued, right? The trial lawyers, those, you don't <laughs> want those guys on your butt. So, right, so, they, so they put this sign up that says Prop 65 uh, tells me I'm supposed to tell you there's cancer-causing agents. So it's everywhere now, so it means nothing now. I mean, do you not understand the, the insanity, how much money was spent on that? How much, how much of an idea it was for the bureaucrats, the old drain the swamp idea? So they feel like they've they feel like they've done something. Look at the symbolism. They clap. Yay, we got it passed. We're going to put a warning on cigarettes next because that'll stop them. Yeah. Oh wait, that's only been there for 40 years. If you've smoked, if you started smoking in the last 40 years, and you didn't know that it's not good for you, you live under a rock or you don't speak English, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, listen, you can smoke. I have family members that do. That's your own thing. Yeah. But don't let it be a surprise to you that, oh my gosh, it's addicting, number one, and number two, that it's not good for you. When did that become news? Oh, 40 years ago, in my third grade class, when they brought in a little uh, you know, clear plastic dummy with cotton in there, and they had a little pump, and the, the teacher lit a cigarette mm. in the class, like you guys, but, <gasps> my junior, cancer-causing, right. get the sanitizer out, get the Purell, <laughs> wipe down everything. And th they put it in the, the little dummy you know, lady that, that's all clear, and they pumped the... the little pump and you saw the smoke go in and then it turned the white cotton. I don't know if they still have these things. I just remember it. They turned the white cotton that was in the lungs into brown, like after one cigarette, right? And then after another one, oh my gosh, it was horrible. And so, ew, nobody wants to do that. Yucky. Except in pottery class, we would make ashtrays for our mom. You remember that? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Love you, mom. And you put... <laughs> <laughs> and you'd make a little pottery class. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Here's your my, my parents still probably have those <laughs> around. 
So they tell you in one class that it's horrible for you, and then in art class you make an ashtray for your mom <laughs> out of the pottery. Uh, but don't worry, you know, today nobody's going to smoke because they all know now that there's a warning la label. Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah, that, that'll do it. It has to be that I know what it is. We now have to outlaw bags. So <laughs> we went to the grocery store over the weekend, and we needed uh, uh, we had a party, my son's birthday party, so we grabbed you know some sodas and stuff. I'm not going to pay a stinking ten cents for any bag. What a what a communist socialist rap that is. Just let the stores they've always paid for it, they've always absorbed it, but now the state of California and the county wants a little tax. All right. So so I'm like I'm not gonna do it. So here we are walking out of the store carrying, you know, fifteen bottles of various soda and stuff and I'm like this is the uh, somewhere somebody goes, Well, we socially took a stand. I'm like, No, you just made it more inconvenient. You just push mm -hmm. more people to leave the stinking socialist state folks this is not a normal thing you call it normal but the rest of the world is not worried about straws i went to a restaurant the other day we no longer will give you straws unless you ask for them what w w what do you mean w what do you mean you don't give me a straw unless well because and they said our straws are biodegradable so they oh. cost five times more than the regular straws so here's symbolism over substance. I said, do you have any idea how a landfill works? They said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, you can put anything you want in a landfill. It has a thick plastic liner. I don't know if it's a half inch to an inch, whatever it is, on the outside. That means it never mixes with the soil. It never mixes with the water table. And it never biodegrades into anything other than just mush. Why? Because it's not mixing with anything. It's just in a, it's just in a bag. And... In that bag, right, it's a very large bag, they put all this stuff, and then they put dirt on top, and then they put some more junk, and then dirt on top. So I remember in college, I was looking, we did some research, because I was a you know, fairly progressive guy in college. And I remember I was going to go through and fight this landfill thing. That was the deal at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, no, I don't know if you ever heard me say this. No, this is fun. So, so I did some research. I came up with this, and I found out with the virtually zero impact, we had 500 years of landfill space in the United States. Wow. More than, you know, what, before Columbus even, quote, discovered America, like the Indians weren't here first. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I discovered this. Uh, it's been here the whole time. Right before Columbus came to the United States. 500 years. And I said, well, that can't be because more, more population. And we looked, and that included a certain amount of growth so I thought, wait a second. So that was the first chink in the armor that maybe you guys better double check what you're being told because your family's finances count on this. Don't trust Wall Street. They're not bad people, but double check everything. Make sure the accounts are right for you. Make sure that whatever purpose you have for the money is what you are going to do with the money and that it's in the right place for it. Don't mix and match. Don't use your children's college fund for your retirement or your retirement for your emergency account. And don't ever use your emergency account for anything other than emergencies. That's what it's about. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Hallaby. That's Jeff Gerard on your place for News Talk and Information, KHTS. KHTS.